Hey, what's going on, guys? My name is The Royal Gamer, and welcome to a different kind of video today. Today, we are going to do a review video on the Guardians of the Galaxy video game. Now, I just finished a full playthrough of the game on my channel, so that will be linked in the description below if you want to take a look at that. How this video will go is that I will basically talk about the game through a bunch of different aspects. For instance, I'll talk about how the gameplay was, how the graphics were, how the game looks, and some other key parts of the game, including like how good the game matched with its genre. First, let's start off with how the story was for the game. I'll try to keep this as spoiler-free as possible, but if there will be a spoiler warning, just in case. The game itself did a great job of telling a super compelling story throughout all of its 16 chapters. Throughout my playthrough, I was always wondering what was going to happen next, and there were plenty of twists and turns along the way. The game also did a fantastic job of showing character growth throughout the story in a way with the characters unlocking like their ultimate ability throughout um, basically dealing with their emotional trauma of their past. I thought that was pretty cool. Now moving on to the gameplay, they did a okay job of not making the combat like repetitive and boring because every new world or area you showed up in um, there were new enemies to fight, and different ways you can defeat them. But even still, being only able to control Star-Lord, it got a little bland after a while. I think if they were able to have you pick what character you wanted to be for a chapter, that would have spiced up some stuff, because it's not like the characters could do different things. They could probably do the same thing. In terms of graphic, I think it lo looked absolutely amazing on the Xbox Series X. I think they were perfect for the current gen and just perfect for what it, the game was supposed to be. I wouldn't have changed the graphics at all. Moving on to the genre. It is labeled as an action-adventure game, and I think the game does per that to a T. There was plenty of action throughout the campaign. There weren't many parts where I was just sitting around waiting for something to happen. There was always some kind of enemy trying to brutally murder me in some way or fashion. As of adventure, you're definitely adventuring. We went through, like, I think five different worlds in general, maybe more, and through uh, spooky caves at some point and great forests. There was plenty of adventure to go around. Another aspect I'm going to talk about is that the game lets you make decisions that'll infect, in, in, not infect, impact your gameplay in some way. Through the decisions you make, the story will change slightly, in some ways probably more than others. I was shocked by this. I had no clue this was a thing. They definitely did not advertise that, and if they did, I missed it. <laughs> After playing through the game, I can definitely still not even know like how to pass some cha choices because sometimes you have to make a character like agree with you, and I failed most of the time on that. If you're a fan of single-player action games, I think this would be absolutely perfect for you, even if you don't love the Marvel games or even if you don't love Marvel characters, I should say, I think this will be a great single-player game that you should definitely try out. I know people have been burned by Square Enix because of the Avengers, but I definitely would give this another chance. I went into it with this open mind, and it was far better than the Avengers game. One thing I wish they could have done differently is added some more things for XP besides unlocking skills. You, as you accumulate XP, you can you, you get skill points. You can use those skill points to unlock skills for each of the guardians. But as when I was like probably two thirds way through the game, I had gotten enough XP to unlock every single ability. So fighting enemies was just so much less fulfilling. It was just to progress the story and no other advantage. It just seemed like very like I had to do it for no other reason other to do it. If I had to grade this game, 
I would probably give it 7, 8 out of 10. My reason for this, and people probably watching this are probably shocked about this, I think it did a great job for what it was meant to do. Tell an amazing story with the Guardians and these amazing characters that we don't get to see all the time. I also loved how they were so different from the movie that it was just perfect. I loved how they used the mines, the Soul Stone instead of just the Power Stone. If you've ever seen many of the Marvel TV shows or or any other games, usually it's the Power Stone, but they use the Soul Stone in this game, and I thought that was super cool. I think they have an amazing opportunity to make a great sequel for this game, but I fear, as you probably heard, these sales were not what they thought, but I think it's because people are too much in the past of the Avengers game and not giving this game a chance. I highly recommend you should try this out in some in one time or another. Maybe wait till it's on sale. It's been going on sale a lot, but if you're looking for a new game to try, highly recommend this game. If you want to see some of my playthrough of it first, the whole thing's down in the description below. And anyway, yeah, that's my review for this. If you liked what you heard or saw, because I showed my gameplay throughout this whole thing, Make sure to leave a like, and make sure to comment and subscribe, and I'll catch you all next time. Bye!